Hello and welcome to The Money Movement. Today we are going to be talking about fractional banking. Now, I will not blame you if you've never heard of fractional banking. Who would? But I rest assured that it does have nothing to do with fractions like you did at school. So sit back and relax while we chat through fractional banking, which is what happens to your money when you give it to a bank. So it's just a given that when you give your money to a bank, you get an interest rate, right? But why does the bank even give you an interest rate? Why don't we just keep money under the sofa? Why get an interest rate? What does the bank do with the money to pay you that interest rate? Why does the bank not lose money when it pays you interest? Well, this is how it's through fractional banking and it's how all the major banks in the world are set up. So there are two types of people in the world, those that have money and those that require money. So those that can save and those that need to borrow. Now, the savers don't have to be people with masses of money. It can just be current accounts, you know, a few pounds in a savings account. This is just people who have surplus money who are above the black line. And then there are people who need to borrow. Now these aren't just people who need to borrow for overdrafts or loans, it's mortgages, it's lending for a business, it's lending to buy a commercial property, it's anything that you go to the bank to get a loan for, maybe even a car. How the bank works, it doesn't have any of its own money. It has a bit of it, but the majority of its lending is done so using your money. So how this works is your savings account, your current account, your cash ISA, your term deposit, it all gets put into one big pool alongside everyone else who's a customer of that bank. And that pool of money is massive. Because just imagine something like Lloyds, for example, all the people that are deposited with Lloyds, all the money put into one pot, it's huge. And what happens is the people at Lloyds will then lend that money out to people who need to borrow it. So they lend it out on monthly overdrafts on a five-year loan, on a 25-year mortgage, or on a three-year car lease. That is how they use your money. This is when the fractional bit comes in, because I can hear you saying, but if they're using my money to lend it to people, how, when I go in, can I get money out of my account? If it's not there, if it's not held with them? Well, this is when the fractional name is earned. So what happens is the bank holds a little bit of people's money back in case you want to earn cash. So when you go to the bank and say, my £100 savings account, I'd like to withdraw it all. They will give you all your money, but that money will be made up of partly your money, but mostly other people's. But it is still your money because it's just money in the bank's hands. But what the bank rely on is not everyone wanting to come and cash in their accounts at the same time because they don't have enough money left in their vaults to pay everyone because it's out on loans. It's being borrowed to start a business. It's being bor borrowed to buy a house over 25 years. So the bank hopes they hold enough reserve to pay people who want it in cash completely while lending out the majority of the money so it can earn an interest rate. Now, this is where they pay the interest rate. Now, they will pay you an interest rate so that you keep the money with them. But why? How can they make money? Well, they are charging the borrowers interest rates that are significantly higher than they pay you as a depositor or a saver. So let's say you deposit money with me, the Money Movement Bank. Let's say it's £100 and I say for your £100 I'll give you an interest rate of 2% per year. So for every £100 you deposit with me, £2 interest. 2% times £100. Now I take your £100, I keep say five back in case you want some of it, that fractional part, and I pull all the rest together with everyone else's. And let's say I lend your £95 out to my friend Elliot, who is not the dodgiest of borrowers, but he's not the best of borrowers either. So there's a slight chance he might not repay. So I'll give him a medium interest rate. Let's say 24% a year on his overdraft. You are earning 2% a year on your money with the bank. And I'm lending your money out to Elliot at 24% a year. So I earn 24% on your money. and I have to pay you two. And the difference there is profit for the bank. And that is how fractional banking works. And there's a chance you don't pay back. So the bank assess the riskiness of whether or not that money is going to be paid back. Now, you might think it's complicated and people have paid vast sums of money to try and quantify this risk for the bank. But think about it when you go to the pub and you agree to pay for everyone's drink. And then you think, ah, I'll get paid back. Now, if you pay for your three friends' drinks, there will be one who always pays back on time. There's one person who you'll get the money out of eventually, but you have to ask quite a few times. We all know that friend. And there's one friend who, no matter how many drinks you buy him, he will never pay you back, and it is pure charity. So just like you assess your friendship group's ability to repay your drink, the banks do this on a much larger scale with millions of people, and they work out who's good for the money, who's not so good, and who's terrible for the money. And depending on how likely they are to pay it back is how high an interest rate they charge. So really good borrowers, low interest rate, because there's not so much risk they won't repay. 
Medium risk, well, they get a slightly higher interest rate because they may not repay, but the chances are they will, so the bank's still pretty comfortable. No hopers down here, they get charged a really high interest rate because the bank have to compensate for the fact they may never get the money they lent them back. They might get a few interest payments, but maybe not the money they lent them. But their hope is that in the grand scheme of things, with everyone's money pooled and lending it out but holding a bit back, that the system stays working and stays functioning. And it is an important system because this is the system that allows people who need money to access it and those who don't need money to earn interest on the money they do not need at the moment. Now the problem comes when all these depositors who have pulled their money together all want to go out at the same time because there will not be enough money. Now that happened in 2008 and if that happened again the financial services compensation scheme would step in to repay everyone subject to the limits. We've done a video on this so go check it out. But that is how banks work and that is why when they pay you interest they are not losing any money. And it's also worth noting how much money they make lending out your money while you get paid the interest rate you get paid. So hopefully that's explained fractional banking to you and hopefully now you understand how banks operate and how they work and how they make money while still paying you money and lending out money to other people. So as always, if you think this was a good video, please do share it, comment, let us know what you think, get in contact with us on social media, let us know what you want us to do videos on. And you might have noticed we changed our background color, so please do comment below on a new background color if you fancy it. Thank you very much and as always, you take care. I think it was, yeah.